All right, I just decided to start videotaping this because it's really a nice um, example of what I'm getting at with this consciousness and uh, inanimate objects. So this is a Hutchison uh, metal sample, and I wasn't doing anything. And I was like, wait, I haven't asked it for, uh, I haven't asked it, I haven't said hello. So I uh, did the pulse breathing technique into it, as described by Marcel Vogel. And who would have thought it? Decided to show something cool. So just a classic, perfectly stable field and... Uh, this is something that I've been talking about and trying to show. I feel like this is the stable conscious pattern through which plasmatic rain, they call it plasmatic rain in a solar storm. I feel like this would be the plasmatic stain, uh, plasmatic stain, plasmatic rain phase, more or less. And uh, now I'm seeing, it's, this isn't breaking into a, coronal mass ejection pattern it just looks like it's a nice flowing repulsing um, just mushroom cloud looking vortex so we'll just watch it for a little bit and take a look at what's going on oh try to zoom in a little This is just uh, more torsion field evidence and uh, just trying to kind of take it from a archaic, um, shamanic, uh, alchemical sort of standpoint in that these are conscious objects. We ourselves are part of the universal consciousness and that matter, time, all these things are much more... Um, Minglable in reality with our minds. So, this is just interesting evidence right here of just consciousness and inanimate objects. I think that's just super beautiful, honestly. It's just pretty. I'm going to take a quick look at the other half just to see. Uh, I got the, got the conscious stereo over there, but uh, this is the other half. Whoa. Got a lot more action. So, <laughs> that's interesting. I was just kind of trying to see what would happen when both of these were tested simultaneously and separated by a short distance. And uh, this one has apparently gone completely into the case. And this one actually has been tested to show a little bit more energetic uh, properties coming out of it. First test that I did... This had about maybe two-thirds of the energy coming out of it between the two together. And so, pulling them apart a little bit, looks like that energy is kind of dispersed up into the case. Versus over here, what we've got is a lot more defined, uh, condensed field, so... I don't know, not quite sure what to think of it, but it's just kind of an interesting thing. So I've just been kind of trying to think of these uh, two halves of this in terms of anodal and cathodal. And uh, try to wrap my mind around that, and maybe y'all are 
taking a look at this and thinking possibly the same thing that there is some sort of an anodal and cathodal uh, situation going on here. And, uh, I've got some pretty wild physical evidence of that. If you like to see some rusty aluminum, kind of a strange thing. So right here we've got put this into the light. We've got rust on aluminum. That's not supposed to happen. And uh, inside of here, we're really interesting to take a look at the scalar waves that were able to more or less unlock consciousness in this object. It left a hexagonal form, and uh, over and over again I found hexagonal forms to indicate consciousness in many, many ways. And uh, inside of there, you'll see rust. So that's really weird. And, uh, so maybe some sort of an indication of some sort of anodal and cathodal uh, separation of these uh, one, one singular aluminum bar. And uh, take a, a closer look at, at the other half of this. Same screen together. So, this used to be one solid bar. Somehow or another, it came apart and it does all sorts of squirrely things. And, um, high frequency, high voltage, small amounts of AC power. Somehow or another, uh, just somehow or another tuned in to take the randomness of scalar energy.